Good evening. My name is Lizzie Lynch. And my name is Susie Francie, and we are excited for you all to be at this concert tonight. We are also excited to announce Concert Choir's first piece, which is Timothy Takash's As a Sunflower Turns on Her God. This piece incorporates a couple of mathematical concepts, the Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio, also known as phi. This Fibonacci sequence is a sequence of, a sequence of numbers in which you take the first number, which is one, add it to the previous number, and then you get the next number. For instance, one plus one equals two, one plus two equals three, two plus three equals five, etc. And then we have the golden ratio, which is a precise proportion that's approximately 1.618, but the decimals just continue on forever, basically. And the choir will be singing this proportion throughout the piece. Timothy Takash does a brilliant job of molding these logical, mathematical principles with the beauty of art and music. Each number sung is paired with a specific chord based off of its corresponding scale degree, with some artistic license taken later on. While all of this is happening, a soprano solo weaves into the piece asking Fibonacci's original question in Latin. A certain person placed one pair of rabbits in a certain place that was on all sides surrounded by a wall so that they might learn how many pairs would be produced from it in one year. Our choir had the honor of FaceTiming with Timothy Takash two days ago. He described the soprano solo as the question being asked while the choir sings the answer, phi, throughout this piece, symbolizing that before the question was even asked, the answer was already there, waiting to be found. Thank you.
Hello, I'm Joe Dennis. And I'm Emma Milton. <laughs> Our next piece is Goethe, composed by Peter Carlson, founding member of the Real Group. Goethe is short for Norgoethe, which is a village in the Faroe Islands, which is a part of the Kingdom of Denmark. The Real Group in 2002 did a performance there, and then afterwards, Peter Carlson stayed around to explore the community of music and collaborated with many artists. Um, after his return home, he woke up one morning with a melody in his head um, of something that he's never written before. Um, he recorded it immediately and then slowly forgot it over time. Um, after a while, his children started hearing him singing it around the house, and it developed into the base of their breakfast jam sessions that they'd start to add drum sounds to, in his words, all just for fun. Later on, the real group pushed him to arrange it, and Goethe was born. The piece we are performing tonight is many levels removed from the original breakfast jam session. We hope you enjoy our evening concert choir jam session.
please join me in thanking Maggie Bice on the double bass. Thank you, Maggie. Hello, my name is Emily Richter, and this next piece is Cum Sancto Spiritu, which is the third movement of a three-movement work, Gloria, by Hugh Won Woo. Hugh Won Woo is a prominent Korean composer from Seoul who is internationally recognized for her choral works. She's particularly known for combining traditional Korean elements such as vocal stylings, melodies, and rhythms with Western choral elements. In this piece, I invite you to listen to the traditional Korean scale, similar to a pentatonic scale, combined with the Changdan rhythm. Enjoy. Good evening. My name is Steve Seek, and we are delighted to share this evening of choral music with you. I want to take this opportunity to thank families, friends, and past teachers of these students who've supported them on their path to Lawrence. Performances like the one you'll hear this evening come not in a five-week rehearsal process, but in years. Years of driving your child to and from those piano lessons, in the daily solfege practice in choir in high school, in those nightly musical theater practices that go a little later than you thought, year after year. And I want to thank you all for supporting these young artists on their journey. 
Our next performance is by Viking Bass Clef Ensemble. It's of a recent work by Andrew Steffen, which uses only one word for the entire song, Alleluia. Andrew's score here draws on the son clave rhythm, and I want to thank Professor Jose Encarnacion for spending time with the ensemble to better, under, to better understand this rhythmic structure, to NAFME student president Alex Medina for leading Eurythmics exercises with the ensemble, and to Professor Philip Swan for his guidance and coaching with the group. A very heartfelt thanks to Victor Montañez Cruz and Tyler Jakes, our student assistant directors, for their leadership in rehearsals and sectionals. Alleluia weaves together intricate rhythmic and melodic lines in a complex and joyful song of praise. Please welcome Viking Bass Clef. And coming to the stage from the balconies is Viking Corral. Viking Corral is working this year on the theme of love. This set focuses on a very specific kind of love, if you can call it that. It's the feeling that you have when you see someone, you know right away that they're too good for you, that it would never work out, but you fall madly in love, your heart doesn't seem to get the message that your brain is telling it, and you find yourself starstruck. As it turns out, this is a very popular kind of song. So we're going to begin, I don't know why, um, we're going to begin with a beloved uh, song from Iraq called Fog El Nachel. The short translation of the song from the Arabic is, there up above on the balcony is my beloved. Is that their cheek shining or is that the moon? By God, I do not want to love this person. I am smitten by them. I don't know what to do with myself. One of the implications in this song is that the protagonist is too poor for their beloved, right? I'm on the street in Europe in the balcony of a nice house. Um, so I want to thank Lawrence alum from the class of 2014, Amel Abbas, for sending us a very helpful Arabic pronunciation recordings and some feedback. And no one here on stage 
uh, would say that we feel fluent in the language or confident in presenting this as a definitive performance, but we've learned a lot in the last five weeks about how to say the words and what they mean. And we hope you will enjoy this really great arrangement by Salim Bali of this beloved Iraqi song, Fog and Nachel. Thank you. Hi, I'm Camille. I have one more thing to say before we start. Um, so, in 2010, the initiative Music for Food was launched, and thus far has created over 900,000 um, meals through donations made at, by nearly 100 hunger relief organizations and concerts. Their mission statement reads, we believe both music and food are essential to human life and growth. Music has the power to call forth the best of us, inspiring awareness and action when artists and audiences work together to transform the ineffable to tangible and needed food resources. Lawrence wanted to get behind this message um, and partnered with Music for Food and the local hunger relief program right here in Appleton called St. Joseph's Food Program to help relieve some food insecurity for some people. Tonight, as well as meant, like all the concerts this weekend, we're going to be having some food bins and a table in the chapel lobby so you can go there afterwards or if you come to another concert then as well. Um, donations can be made as cash, um, checks made out to Music for Food program. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's really cool. I think, it, <laughs> I don't know. It's a nice program that has started like 100% of the proceeds go to St. Joseph's and not to Music for Food. Music for Food only catalogs the fact that like, yes, we have been doing something and it's a way for musicians who sometimes can produce wonderful music but can't always help people directly. It's a way to like increase awareness and do something more tangible. So yeah, I hope you're enjoying the concert.
and invite the fiddling club on stage. There they come. So the star of the county down is a beloved Irish folk song about a protagonist who's just walking and they uh, happen upon Rose McCann, who as it turns out is the most beautiful person in all of Ireland. So, yeah, come on stage here. Uh, the narrator has never been one to settle, they're more of a rover, but they decide right there and then that Rose is the one. So he promises they'll clean up, put on their Sunday best and make a great impression on her. Um, as we welcome forward the Fiddlers of Lawrence University, I want to tell you why this performance is so cool. On the first rehearsal, I introduced the choir to the song itself, the tune and the words. In the second rehearsal, my colleague Leela Pirtle taught them how to dance a reel, like a, a R-E-E-L, dance that would go with the song. Then we listened to a couple performances of it. Here's the Dubliners, here's the Chieftains, here's the Irish Rovers, right? And then we broke up into four groups for the four verses, and each uh, group was their job was to figure out how they wanted to arrange that verse. They had to decide, do I want, do, should we sing this in unison? Should we sing this in parts? If we sing this in parts, all four parts or just sopranos? Do we want accompaniment with instruments? Do we want this part to be a cappella? Do we want this to be loud? Do we want it to be quiet? And they made a series of decisions. We workshopped them all together. I wrote all their ideas down in the score. We read it through, we made some revisions. We did a second version of the score. We made some more revisions. We made a third revision of the score. And then we worked with the Fiddlers on Tuesday and we made some more changes then. So it's not unrealistic to say, we just wrote this song. So you are hearing the world premiere of our arrangement of The Star of the County Down.
Good evening. My name is Marian Hermitano, and I'm a sophomore in Cantala, majoring in linguistics and Spanish. It is my pleasure to introduce the first piece in Cantala's set, The End of Troy, by Bernard Van Bierden. Since our set explores contrasting topics of tragedy and triumph, it is only fitting that this piece portrays one of the most tragic narratives of Greek mythology, the Trojan War. This piece uses text from the Trojan women authored by Euripides in 410 BC to illustrate the story in authentic detail. According to legend, the Trojan War began when the Trojan prince Paris abducted Helen, the queen of Sparta. Helen's husband, Menelaus, led an expedition to retrieve her and assembled an army to besiege the city of Troy. After the soldiers had besieged Troy and terrorized the surrounding countryside for nine years, they decided to gift a supposed peace offering in the form of a large wooden horse to the city. King Priam of Troy accepted this gift despite numerous warnings, unaware that the wooden horse was full of soldiers who would eventually sack the city in the night. The army slaughtered the vast majority of the citizens and kept any remaining women and children who had not escaped as slaves. It is no question that this piece has been challenging for us not only technically, but also expressively, as we sing of the distress of a people whose cherished home was brutally stolen from them. The unpredictable melody and often chaotic rhythm of this piece bring the anguish of Troy's people to life, especially when paired with the hollow and lamenting tones of the bassoon. We ask you to listen carefully and imagine this final tragic scene as we present The End of Troy with our collaborator, Professor Carl Rath.
I just need to quickly, before he leaves stage, um, don't leave stage. <laughs> um, we have, um, it was such a great honor to work with uh, Carl Rath on this piece. Um, such a difficult challenge for us, um, but a great collaboration. And we have something special. He is celebrating a birthday tomorrow. So we thought, <laughs> since this is a choral concert, we should sing happy birthday to him. So would you join us in singing happy birthday to Carl Rath? Happy birthday to Hello, my name is Jamie Hammer, and I'm a second. <laughs> Hi, I'm a second year studying vocal performance and geology. Our next piece is called Sed Amore. It is an arrangement by Dale Warland of an excerpt from a text by Benedict de Spinoza. Benedict de Spinoza was an eclectic 17th century philosopher, who, along with free thinkers like Descartes and Leibniz contributed greatly to virtually every area of philosophy. This text is drawn from a major work of his called Ethics, which summarizes Spinoza's views on man, nature, and how to live a good life. In response to End of Troy, Sed Amore is a call for peace in our time. It is telling us to remember that in times of despair and hardship, we must seek out bonds with each other and our community. And to that end, love and generosity are forces far more powerful than war and hate. I will now read a translation of the text. Above all, it is useful for people to establish relationships, to bind themselves by those bonds which are most apt to unite them as one, and without exception, to do those things which serve to strengthen, to strengthen friendship. Hearts, therefore, are not won by arms, but by love and greatness of soul.
Thank you so much for being here tonight. We have one last song for you. This is by uh, an Australian composer, Sandra Millican. Um, it's a tango, which is kind of a combination of a tragedy and a triumph. So uh, we'll finish with this piece tonight. We hope you enjoy Tango in Five by Sandra Millican. Thank you. 